What's good, y'all? And welcome to my review for Fantastic Beasts and the, the Secrets of Dumbledore. Just got back from the theater, man. Yo, I gotta say, this movie was pleasantly surprised. Now, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you guys know I rewatched the first two Fantastic Beasts movies. Uh, oh, Jesus. Last week to prepare for this one, just to kind of more or less refresh my Americas. I'm gonna be real. I barely remember the first two movies from at least from at least before I went back and rewatched them. And you know, you guys can check my letterbox. Like I mean, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in a movie review uh, a while ago that uh, that one of the assignments from my class is that my film press wants all to keep like a, a journal of what we're watching, i.e., you know, logging movies on like letterbox and you know, writing reviews for them and all that shit. So if you guys want to know my like my full thoughts on the first two Fantastic Beasts movies, check out my letterbox or if you better yet, if you want an updated review of my thoughts on, on Crimes of Grindelwald, check out my letterbox because I well I think I'm pretty sure my score said the exact same for both um between the two of them but i think i think overall my review on my other box is way better than my original review i made back in 2018 but uh yeah man i like i said i was interested i was intrigued so we were somewhat excited you know it's harry potter you guys know uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure i mentioned before probably the trailer reaction if not somewhere else that you know harry that growing up harry potter was my shit me and my mom that's how I'm, you know, my mom got me into them to the movies and everything and we started watching the films together you know when the newer ones start coming i want to say with Order of the Phoenix, but Half Blood Prince was the first one that I distinctly remember. Me and my mom were rushing to the theater to go watch. I think we also saw, we might have saw Order of the Phoenix in theaters as well because that came out in 07, but not 100% certain on that one. But Half Blood Prince is the first one that I distinctly remember seeing with it. So, yeah. I was excited, but not like super excited, like, oh my god, I can't wait, you know, all right, new Harry Potter movie, more wizarding role, more, more of the wizarding role, more, uh, wizarding world from J.K. Rowling, let's see what we got, man, I'm interested, and, yo, I will say, I've got to say, this is probably my favorite in the trilogy so far, now, we still got another two movies to come out from this one, very curious to know where they're going to go with them, where they're going to go with the story from here in the next two films, but we shall see on that, and, yeah, man. Without further ado, let's jump right, in, jump right in. So, the movie is directed by David Yacht and stars the man, the myth, the legend, Mad Mickelson's Ed, Eddie, Eddie Ray, Ray, Raymond, Ray, 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 last name, Jude Law, Ezra Miller, Dan, Dan F F Fogler, and many more. And the plot of Secrets of Dumbledore, Albus Dumbledore signs Newt and his allies with a mission related to the rising power of Grindelwald. Now, so first off, I gotta say the cast is awesome. Um, oh, Eddie, Eddie is great as new. I loved him. Judy Law, I thought was is amazing as Dumbledore. I mentioned this before, but I mentioned this in my review for uh, Crimes of Grindelwald, at least on my letterbox. I don't know if I mentioned this in my original review from 2018. I'm not going back and rewatching it. <laughs> um, that he stole the show, man. Every time he was on screen, I loved it, and I wish we got some more screen time of him. But yeah, I was like, oh, that's where the third was part four, in which we did get here. He's a lot. He is a way more bigger presence in the movie here. But of course, the highlight of the cast. The the man that stole the show every time he was on screen is the man, Mads fucking Mickelson. This man is amazing as Grindelwald. I will say out of the three actors we've seen play as him, Johnny Depp and whoever played him in the first movie, I can't remember his name. I love Mad Mickelson. He's without the best in the three. And I hope they stick with him for the next two movies. Uh, you know, they don't end up recasting him again, but God knows what happens with this franchise. Ever, it seems like every other cast member is going insane. <laughs> First you had there's the Johnny Depp, then you have people going after J.K. Rowling, and now Ezra Miller's gone insane. It's like it's like the series is cursed or something, man. <laughs> oh man, but yo, he's awesome, man. And I hope to God that we see more of him in the next two movies, and they and they keep with Matt Nicholson because he's fucking awesome, man. I love Matt Nicholson in the movie, and I think the overall did a really good job with his characterization. Like I thought uh, overall as a villain, I liked. Grindelwald more in this movie than he was in the film we did in the first two movies. I don't know how much of that is actually just from the strength of the characterization, the writing, or how much just because his play he's he's Mad Nicholson. But like legit, this man straight up kills like a fucking deer at the start of the movie first see man like a baby deer too. And I'm like, God damn, that's fucked. But I like it. <laughs> they're like, all right, they're not fucking around with Grindelwald anymore, man. He's out here killing baby deers. <laughs> but yeah, Mad Nicholson, man. He is fucking awesome, man, and I love him. Uh, Ezra Miller, I thought, was great as well. I, one thing I noticed when I rewatched the first movie is how shockingly good his performance was in the first movie. Seriously, his, his performance in the first Fantastic Beast movie might actually be his one of my might actually be the best performance I've seen from him. Man, seriously, he is amazing in that first one, and I think he is great in this one as well. And I and I gotta say, 
I really dug his look in uh, in in this movie, man. Like, I think the long hair actually low key actually really suits Ezra. Weirdly enough, I actually kind of dug his look with the with the long hair and the black suit. It really dug his look, man. It suits him. Strangely, it suits him. <laughs> but um, they're great. All the cast member is great. Um, the uh, I will say this movie is really well directed. Man. The directing this movie I thought was really well done. Sim Tarf in general I thought was all over, overall so really good, man. But there's a lot of cool shots in this movie that I really liked. Um, the act, the the couple of times we actually do get some action scenes, those were really done. Those were really well done, man. Especially when we do have to get to see Dumbledore flex a little bit. There's a couple times where we do got to see him, like that was pretty cool to see that, man. Like the fight with uh, Credence in the was was really well done. That move, that that fight was fucking cool, man. There was a lot of cool shit in that one. And you know the fight we get in the third act was really good. A lot of, all the fights in the third act I thought were really good, man. But yeah, the action scenes in here that we actually get to see the Winters fighting each other, that is fucking awesome, man. But the one thing I gotta say that I think I that I think really did this movie a uh, huge service, and this is definitely the one thing I will definitely admit to that I I think they've learned from uh, Crimes of Grindelwald is that my biggest problem with Crimes of Grindelwald, at least when I rewatch it, I don't know what I I don't know about my original review back in twenty back in when I made twenty eighteen, that the I thought that Crimes of Grindelwald just took itself way too damn seriously, and it was just like way too dark. Like, yeah, the, uh, like, yeah, some of the Harry Potter movies did go in that more darker, more serious direction, but, like, there was some levity. There were movies in between them where they didn't just go from, you know, like, fucking Sorcerer's Stone and right to the Deathly Hollows, you know? Um, and also, I just think, I think I will say I do prefer the Harry Potter characters that I do find I am more invested into them than I am the Fantastic Beast character, but they are great as well, man. I love them as well, but, yeah, the Harry Potter characters, yeah, I'm more invested into them, but. But, yeah, because this movie definitely, it is definitely, you know, it has its serious moments and everything, but the movie has a way much more of a lighter tone, and there's a lot more comedy in the movie, which I think really, which I think really, really helped it. Like, of course, you got the, the scene that was in the trailer where he's like, you're swimming. He's like, you're not swimming. He's like, I'm swimming like you're swimming. That whole scene was awesome. It was where Newt is out there doing the swiveling with the crabs. You know, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. But the movie obviously has a serious moment. But I think the movie going in a more uh, lighthearted tone compared to like the super dark and very serious tone from the last movie I thought really, really helped the movie out a lot. And definitely I would have enjoyed the movie a hell of a lot more, man. Um, I also got to say, um, I love what we, I love Jacob in this movie. He's awesome, man. I love, I love what, how they kind of like, um, uh, further, uh, further develop the relationship between him and Queenie. I thought that was really done, really cool. I like how the couple times we need to get to see them have screen time together was great. I love that he now has a, that he, like, now he has a wand now, and I think that was great. But they, he actually doesn't use the wand as much as, as I thought he would. Like, I thought there would have been, like, one time where he's actually, like, fighting with it, but he's mostly just, like, this one scene that we kind of saw a little bit in the trailers. But that was pretty funny that when we, that was pretty funny when he actually got to use the wand. Um, so that was real. That was really well done. Obviously, returning back to Hogwarts will always put a smile on my face. Seriously, I low key wish that one of these fantastic people we actually see a fucking Quidditch match for one. Seriously, we haven't seen a Quidditch match in God knows how. What was was did the Deathly Hallways even have a Quidditch match in them? What was the last part of that had a Quidditch match? I can't remember because I barely remember any of the movies. But seriously, I do wish we got to see a Quidditch match because we actually do because the Quidditch ball actually has a bit of a presence in the movie. Seriously, like. Can we get some Quidditch in, like, even the new Harry Potter game? We still don't even know if you can even play Quidditch in the game. Like, where's the love for Quidditch? <laughs> where's the love for Quidditch? But, um, I really did like the section where we actually are in Hogwarts. Mostly just because, yes, the nostalgia states Hogwarts, you know, the Harry Potter movie. But I like what they did there, like, with uh, Jacob and how he interacting with, like, uh, with the characters and with these other ones. Like, when they're like, oh, where'd you get this one? And, like, the Slytherin fucking kids give him, like, these, like, cockroach cookies or something. Of course, the people from, of course, those assholes from Slytherin, of course, you know, put prints on them. <laughs> Fuck Slytherin. <laughs> Fuck Slytherin. <laughs> Everyone in Slytherin's an asshole confirmed. <laughs> but um that was obviously awesome man. I love that 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 whole section that was awesome man and uh yeah I think that's about all I can really I think that all about for pros I got like also the new um 
Fantastic Beast creatures we do get to see in this movie. We don't get that many. We only really get like a couple. Uh, they were really they were really cool for, as, as far as their designs go. Although I will say I love how Teddy was used this movie. The, the creatures that we definitely got to see in the first two movies, like Teddy and the uh, the little green plant guy, I forget what his name was. Um, they get a lot more screen time than they did in the and I believe this and I believe even more in the first one. Definitely more than they did get in Crimes of Grindelwald. But I think they might have had a little bit more screen time here. I really dug what they were doing here, like with um while Newt is getting cat is like trying to get his brother back. You know, you got these shenanigans going on with him and Teddy and what Teddy is doing, man, he's awesome. It's just, I fucking love Teddy, man. Out of all the fantastic beast creatures that we have seen in this movie, without a doubt, Teddy is my favorite, man. He's awesome. I love him. I love Teddy, man. He's awesome. But um, yeah, I love Teddy. He was awesome when the couple when we do get to see a man who like the shenanigans he gets into, man. <laughs> uh he's awesome, man. I love him. But um yeah, now as far as like uh, negatives I have I have with Crimes of Grindelwald. There's really only two. One, I like while I do like the new designs that we got and the new creatures we got introduced into this movie, and I thought they looked really cool. I will say if there's one thing Crimes of Grindelwald does have over um, this one, it's definitely that I think I would prefer the new creatures we got into that movie. Yes, you can say I'm a little bit biased because they were based off of like Japanese and Chinese mythology. You guys know all of Japan all that too, but I overall thought they were just a little bit cooler. If you ask me, man, like, these new ones are cool, but, like, one of them is a dragon, the other one is a Bambi knockoff, you know? <laughs> We've kind of already seen this before, you know? <laughs> but, um, I like that. I love, I definitely prefer, I definitely think that, like, dragon creature we saw in Crimes of Grindelwald was really cool. That's also another one of my favorite creatures when you've got to in the Fantastic Beast movies. Um, I thought was who, he was great. Uh, also, one thing I gotta say, uh, Lisa isn't really in the movie all that much. Like, she's, like, only a glorified cameo. <laughs> Um, uh, now, I don't know why that was. They kind of, like, rid her off. Like, we only really see her pictures, like I said, a couple of cameo appearances. Uh, I, because, you know, I mostly mentioned it because I loved her character, and I love her relationship she has with Newt, and the, especially in the first movie. The second movie, they don't really do much of it, but the first movie especially, I really liked them, and I kind of wish we got more of them in there, but who knows? Maybe with the fourth one, they might bring her back into the fold, make her a main character again, and maybe then they'll actually... Do something with her relationship and actually moving forward and progressing. <laughs> I feel like it's, since the first place, the relationship's kind of just been stagnant and just stayed in the same place, you know? So, who knows? But, like, love the relationship with Queenie and Jacob. Those two are awesome, man. I love what they did with them, man. But, uh, yeah, man, that's about all I got to say with terms of crimes of crime of the wall. With uh, Secrets of Dumbledore, man, at least spoiler free. Obviously, there's a lot of shit you can go with once you get exposed, but not going to get in there, man. But, uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I had a hell of a time, man. And definitely for my fellow Potter fans out there, if you haven't already pre-ordered your tickets, they're going to go see it. Definitely go check it out, man. I think you guys will definitely press by Especially if you're someone that wasn't a big fan of Crimes of Grindelwald, I think you will be very pleasantly surprised with the sequence of Dumbledore, man. And I would definitely say, for me personally, it is without a doubt the best in the trilogy, man. And seriously, like I said before, the directing and cinematography of this movie is fantastic, man. I love the way this movie looks. And there are so many cool shots in the act and the like actual fights we get to see, man. Oh, they're awesome, man. I love them. Seriously. So yeah, guys, definitely check this movie out for my fellow Potter fans out there, man. And also, and also leave your thoughts and ratings down below in the comments. And in case you how you guys would rank the Fantastic Beast movies, you guys want to see how I rank them, check out my litter box. I already got the already got the list up already up on my account. So if you guys want to know what I think of uh, how I rank them, check them out there. And of course, you know, check out my reviews if you guys want my full thoughts on the first two movies. But uh, yeah, man. Anyway, guys, overall, my final verdict for, for Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, is going to be a 9.5 out of 10, guys. Anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. If you like it, the link's down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.